welcome dear friends today we are going to see uh, the nasal and pulmonary drug delivery system so in ancient times the indian ayurvedic system of medicines used the nasal route for administration of the drug and the process was called as nasya so intranasal drug delivery is now recognized to be a useful and a reliable alternative to oral and parenteral routes undoubtedly the intranasal administration of medicines for the symptomatic relief and prevention or treatment of the topical nasal conditions it is widely used for a very long period of time the respiratory route of administration has also been the medically desired uh, drug delivery portal for the administration of topical anti inflammatory drugs so these drugs they are administered either to the lungs that is the lower respiratory system to treat asthma or to the nasal cavity that is the upper respiratory system to treat allergic rhinitis however recently the nasal mucosa it has seriously emerged as a therapeutically viable route for the systemic drug delivery in general the primary targets for intranasal administration are pharmacologically active compounds with poor stability in uh, gat fluids poor intestinal absorption and or extensive or which undergo extensive hepatic first pass metabolism such as peptides proteins and polar drugs the nasal delivery it seems to be favorable way to circumvent the obstacles for the blood brain barrier allowing the direct drug delivery in the bio phase of the central nervous system active compounds it has also been considered to be the administration of to be to for the administration of the vaccines now let us see what is the advantage of it it avoids the first pass metabolism there is rapid drug absorption and quick onset of action bioavailability of larger drug molecules is improved by using absorption enhancer bioavailability for smaller drug molecules is very good sub epithelial tissue it has high vascularization uh, it is also convenient for long term therapy as compared to uh, parenteral medication uh, drugs which poses poor stability in the gi fluids they can be given by nasal route it is very easy and convenient to use uh it is as easily administered to unconscious patients it shows very few side effects drug is delivered a drug can be delivered directly to the brain along with the olfactory nerve the disadvantages of this system is uh the pathological condition conditions such as cold or allergies may alter significantly the nasal bioavailability of the drug the histological toxicity of absorption enhancers used in in the nasal drug delivery system is not yet clearly established uh, relatively it is inconvenient to the patients when compared to oral delivery because it might cause nasal irritation nasal cavity provides smaller absorption surface area when compared to git now let us see the nasal anatomy the nasal septum it divides the nose into two nasal cavities each with a 2 to 4 mm uh, wide slit opening and contains three distinct uh, functional regions that is um, vestibular region respiratory region and olfactory region the respiratory region uh, it contains the largest surface area and uh, is located between the vestibular and olfactory regions the respiratory region is the most important part for the drug delivery which is uh, for systemic delivery the vestibular region is located closest to the nasal passage opening it contains long hairs and serve as a filter for incoming particles the olfactory region is located in the uppermost por portion of each cavity and opposite the septum this region is responsible for smelling so nasal mucosa it has exopeptidase enzymes uh, and endopeptidase enzymes so these enzymes they cause enzymatic degradation of the peptides and proteins during absorption normal ph of the nasal secretion in adult is 5.5 to 6.5 and infants and young children it is around 5 to 6.7 nasal cavity is covered with the mucous membrane 
uh, and it is composed of 95% water, 2% uh, mucine, 1% salt, 1% of other proteins like albumin, lysozyme and lactoferrin and 1% lipids. So the primary function of the nose is olfaction. It heats and humidifies the inspired air and it also filters the airborne particles. Consequently, the nose function as a protective system against foreign material. The vestibular area, it serves as a buffer system. It functions as filter of, for airborne particles. The olfactory epithelium is capable of metabolizing the drugs. The respiratory mucosa is the region where drug absorption is optimal. Now let us see mechanism of drug absorption. A drug may cross the nasal mucosa by three different mechanisms. It might get transferred via the transcellular uh, or a simple diffusion across the membrane. Here the transport of lipophilic drug uh, is passive. Uh, it might occur by passive diffusion or active transport. The second is the paracellular transport. This is slow and passive absorption of the peptides and proteins associated with the intercellular spaces and the tight junctions. Next is the transcytosis. Here the particle is taken into a vesicle and then it is transferred to the cell. Now we will see the pulmonary route. Pulmonary route is used to treat different respiratory diseases from last decade. The inhalation therapies involves the use of leaves from plants, vapors from aromatic plants, balsams and myrrh. Uh, pulmonary drug delivery is primarily used to treat conditions of the airways, delivering locally acting drugs directly to their site of action. Delivery of the drug directly to the site of action reduces the dose needed to produce a pharmacological effect. The respiratory attack is one of the oldest route used for administration of the drug over the past decade. Uh, inhalation therapy it has established as valuable tool in the local therapy of pulmonary diseases such as asthma or COPD. So this type of drug application in the therapy of these diseases is a clear form of targeted drug delivery. So currently 25 drug substances, they are marketed as inhalational aerosol products for local pulmonary effects and about the same number of drugs are in different stages of clinical development. The drugs used for asthma and COPD mostly involves the B2 and uh, agonist like salbutamol, terbutaline, formuterol, corticosteroids, budes uh, like budesonoid, uh, flixotide, biglamethazone and um, mast cell stabilizers such as sodium chromoglycate or nidochromin. The latest and probably one of the most promising application of pulmonary drug administration is it's used to achieve systemic absorption of the administered, administered drug substance, particularly for those drug substances that exhibit poor bioavailability when administered by oral route, as for example, peptides and proteins. So it might be a very convenient port of entry. The advantages of this method is uh, the, nose ne the dose needed to produce a pharmacological effect. It is uh, low. The uh, low concentration in the systemic circulation are associated with reduced systemic side effects. That is rapid onset of action. It avoids the gastrointestinal upset. It avoids the intestinal and first pass hepatic metabolism. Disadvantage of this delivery is it is complex, uh, complex delivery devices are required to target the drug to the airways and these devices may be inefficient. Aerosol devices can be difficult to use. Various factors affect the reproducibility of the drug delivery to the lungs, including physiological and pharmaceutical variables. Drug absorption may be limited by physical barrier of the mucus layer and the interaction of the drug with the mucus. Mucociliary clearance reduces the retention time of the drug within the lungs. Efficient drug delivery of slowly absorbed drug must overcome the ability of the lung to remove drug particles by mucociliary transport. So this was all about the root, nasal root of administration. Uh, thank you for watching.